everybody and welcome to DC Fine Art. I'm Deborah Childers and sorry about me being like a day or two late on the video. Um, I did post over on the or on my Facebook and my MeWe group uh, on MeWe or at least on MeWe that I was going to be a day or two late. I know that the 4th of July weekend spending time with my family um, definitely had to put aside some things and kind of spend time with them because I know my kids were super excited for the 4th of July weekend and I didn't want to spend that time just totally honed in on just doing my art stuff but I did make time to be able to do a little bits and pieces here and there and I was able to go ahead and create the strawberry uh, with the water so I got the water done over the strawberry and I will show you a little bit of that I will also show you um, some of the strawberry I got some of it done so that's always a good thing. I didn't get to the part of where, um, like using the brightest highlights that I usually use, using the touched up texture. It's the titanium white. Actually, I can show you guys it, but I will, I know, spoiler alert, oh, spoiler alert. Here, I should sit down so that way the camera. Um, there will be a third video on this one. So it will be basically the top of the strawberry and the leaves with the water going over the leaf, leaf part, or at least the green part of it, which is the same concept as it going over the strawberry itself. So it's just a different color is all it is. And then working on the little droplets of water, putting in your brightest highlight of white without using a color pencil white. Now in the video, I did go ahead and pull out my um, Derwent drawing white, Chinese white. I know it's on a little pencil holder and that's only our extender and that's only because it's super super small it is actually it's kind of a little stuff in there but you can see how small it is I mean there it is like it's super super tiny so it has to be in a little extender otherwise it's really hard to work with but yeah I absolutely love these Derwent Chinese white pencils color pencils and I, you can order them online individually because they are open stock. And I go ahead and I grab a few of those. Um, and then plus my, I've been using my Caran d'Ache Luminance on the white for the remainder of it. But I wanted to show you that titanium white that I'm talking about. Um, okay. <clears throat> well, this one's not open. This one is open okay so to get my brightest whites and making sure that it's still archival that I can still use this um, and it still be you know all good for selling and everything like that because it's meant for color pencil it's meant for going over the top of color pencil so you got the color pencil touch-up texture um, this here is right they're all by brush and pencil and this one here is just the kind of a clear liquid. It, it's in a nail polish kind of thing. And you unscrew it. And you can brush this on if you're wanting to add a little bit more texture to your paper. You know, where you kind of ran out of the tooth of the paper, you can actually use this over the top and create a little bit more texture after it dries. Or you can take some of this, which is that same thing, and you can mix some of it in, in a separate little container. But this is the Color Pencil Titanium White. It's by Brush and Pencil by um, Aliona Nicholson. And she created this for us. Uh, she's a very good pencil, color pencil artist. And so it's like a powder, except it's white. It says Titanium White. So it's like a powder and it's like super white. If you see in there, you see some of the powder. Yeah. So what you do is you just take a little bit of this and a little bit of this. So you pour a little bit of this into like a little dish or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be much, just enough to what you're needing and a little bit of the powder and make sure it's thinned out like acrylic paint. Like whenever you take acrylic paint and you put a little wood of water in there to make it looser and more runnier so that way you can create a brush stroke that's what kind of consistency you want and this basically makes it super white and then that way you can use a brush and you can just highlight 
what areas you want to be the brightest whites, like your brightest whites. And it comes out super, super white. So you want to be, I guess, very lenient on where you want to put it. Like it has to be your brightest white areas because it is going to be like pop. It's going to really, really pop. So you want to be careful to, if you were to put it on some place and you're like, oh my God, it looks amazing. And then you just want to put it everywhere. That's where the mistake comes. You don't really want to put it everywhere. You just want to put it in your brightest, brightest white highlighted areas like just where the whitest part is from your reference photo you don't want to go crazy with it because then it won't look right but um yeah so those are the things that I use to get my brightest highlights or my brightest whites and yeah I guess so far what you guys can see is this is the strawberry that's how much I got done of it I still need to go over um, a second layer over the top of this so this here is not completely done or anything I still need to work my way on up uh, do another layer here and then I'll still need to do the rest of it along with the leaf but yeah let's go ahead and I know you guys are excited um, let's go ahead and jump on over into the video I'm gonna do I know I did on the other videos a still photo step by step I am here back in my studio I tried using my phone to be able to do the pictures and then put them on the computer and do it for some for some reason I had some electronical issues so I wasn't able to do the step by step but instead of doing step by step I'm just gonna kind of slow it down a little bit for um, some of the water parts and then I'll speed it up to get through it and I'll just kind of slow it down on some of the major like parts that maybe you need to know on how I get started doing something and then speed it up afterwards. So we'll try and take it from there and do that. And then also, before we jump into this video, just wanted to give my little speech here that I'm trying to get used to doing. But uh, thank you all for everybody who has subscribed to my channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. So happy that you can join me again. And then also, if you're new here, and let's just say you've been passing by my channel, just check on there and see if you haven't subscribed. I would absolutely love for you guys to subscribe to my channel. So yeah, definitely hit the, um, what do they always say? Smash the like and um, click the little like subscribe button. That definitely, definitely helps me. And yeah, I think, I think that's it. I think we're ready to go ahead and hop on into this video. All right, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now I'm starting off with my first color. It's a soft violet by Derwent Pro Color. And I'm just kind of using this a little bit around, um, basically what I'm gonna be working with at first is going to be, uh, here, I'm gonna go ahead and straighten up the camera. You can see a little bit better. There's this little bit strip right above where the water has a little thin gap in the water to where it's not actually covering the strawberry there's like a gap there so I'm gonna be starting out with this now I did slow this down um, quite a bit I ended up making it a little bit faster than just normal speed that way this video is not super super long I mean it's already long as it is but I also wanted to not speed it up as fast as I normally do so that way you can kind of see what I'm doing and um, so yeah, this here is just me creating the seeds, creating the different colors of the strawberry because in the reference photo you'll have dark colors and then you'll have your lighter colors. So I'm just kind of going through with, um, let's see here, on the darker color and I can't keep up with every single color that I use but I can tell you some of the colors that I use the most. And um, the darker color on this I use the Crimson uh, Alzarian, I think that's how you say it. It never sounds right whenever I say it, but it's like the Crimson Alzarian um, Hue. It is from the Karen Dosh Luminates. That's what I use for the darker color. And then for the lighter colors, I used a, um, let's see here. Um, I used the Geranium Lake. And then I've also used the Elzerian Crimson on the on the Karen Dosh Luminance, like I said. So I mean, I kind of use those colors and I just, from my color chart, I'll just go in and um, do those colors. The seeds, uh, 
I used was a terracotta out of the Derwent Pro Color and that's what I used on the seeds but then I went back through and started darkening those seeds a little bit with the Venetian Red and it's more of like kind of tones it down gives a little bit more of a brownish color to it I usually go around the little circles that I made with if you see the little black spots everywhere it looks like little eyeballs those are actually um, water droplets and or, or at least the little circles of water and I just make sure to go around those and then to create more of that lighter color that you see there like the where the water kind of goes up over the strawberry I used um, like a pinkish color I used let's see here like let's see here if I remember the colors I'm kind of pulling them out and kind of just looking back at them I used like a, either a pink white out of the luminance or like a um yeah I think it was the pink white out of the luminance um but it's like that really light pinkish tone and I'll go over it just to make sure you know I know where the area is where that goes I'll tint it with a little bit of the red like our lighter color red that we use and then I'll go back over it with a white so basically I'm mixing my colors whenever it goes to this and if I'm wanting to create like a water effect then I'll just use my color pencils like like kind of like if you were going ahead and doing your strawberry uh, without like water if you think okay it's not water just kind of do your strawberry the way it should and then just go over the top of it with a white um, that tones it down it brings uh, more of that you know like if the water was going up over it so that really does help when you do it that way if you're wanting something really really to be light then I start out with the white first even though you can't really see it much and that way it doesn't darken too much neither so here I am just kind of going over my little seeds that I'm putting in using white to go around it I'd already put some shading of some red in there it's just very very light and it gives it kind of a pinkish glow too there's some more of the seeds using my terracotta kind of putting those in there because I started doing one at a time as I go but then it just kind of got to a point where I was like let me just go ahead and put the seeds in there first and I kind of go back and forth there is no real order as far as if you want to put your seeds in there um, one at a time you can as you go or you can just put them all in first and then just go from there so there I am shading a little bit of the water like with the red and then I used here I used a little bit more of that pinkish color and then I went over it with white so that pink was one of the Derwent Pro colors, so it probably was my salmon or salmon or however you call it. I, my accent's really bad. <laughs> and yeah, I pushed in the camera as far as I can put it as close as or well, as close as I could to the picture for you guys so maybe you can see a little bit better um, it was definitely a challenge for me I, I can tell you that because whenever my I would get like a longer pencil and try and use it sometimes I would hit the camera with the pencil it was just that close so I was trying my best to get a good view for you guys to be able to see and that was definitely a challenge here I am putting in another seed, adding a, I do the terracotta. I used um, the darkest color that I tried to do on the seeds was using a, like a purple out of the Derwent Light Fast, or you could even use out of the Derwent Light Fast. I think it's like Vortex or Vortex or something like that. It's like in one of their newer colors. Um, I used that to go around the seed if you're needing it to be really dark. And that really does help sometimes I even put the darker like the purple and stuff like that you know kind of layer it in a little bit deeper you know a little bit darker if the strawberry is a little bit ripened or darkened in that area so you definitely wanted a shade darker than the um, the area of the strawberry like the top of the strawberry like if it's been ripened you definitely want your seeds a little bit darker in that 
but I mean it also goes off your reference photo too. Everything that I'm doing here is just watching my reference photo. Everything's not perfect neither. I mean, if you put this up to the reference photo, it's not going to look the same. It's not going to be exactly in the right area that's supposed to be because, I mean, it's not, it's not identical, but it is really close. I try to get as close as I could, but sometimes when you're doing so many seeds, or I know with me, it gets to a point where Okay, I'm just going to put in the seeds where I want to put them. <laughs> so, so, I know the seeds aren't going to be lined up. There, I'm using some of that purple. That's that uh, purple violet. Just kind of giving it a little bit of a hue. And then I'm using white over it. And if I was trying to darken them up a little bit, I was using a little bit of that purple to put a little bit more darkened area around where the seed was underneath the water. And then as you've seen, I took my white and went over the top of that with the white. So you can still see that purple, it's just up underneath the white. Like if you were um, putting, like if the water was over the top of the strawberry. Here I'm kind of finishing up some of the water that I, <laughs> it definitely took me a while to do the little water, but I am going ahead and finishing in some of the bottom of the water where it comes up to the strawberry. Now it's on the bottom here, it didn't have like a see-through effect to where you could actually see the strawberry in it, at least in the reference photo you couldn't see the strawberry. So in this part I'm just kind of doing a lot of my grays. Uh, my lighter grays, which is basically using the Payne's gray, 30% as being my lightest gray. And then if I was trying to put in some of those lines, I would go ahead and use my Payne's gray 60%. Sorry about that, that AC kicks on, it's kind of loud. So now here I'm taking my light gray, which is that uh, Payne's gray 30%, and I'm kind of going over the top of the white where the strawberry is too, because that way it gives it the color of the water. The water is a little bit of a gray, grayish color or a gray blue color, like I picked out the Payne's gray, like in the first video, I wanted to have like a bluish tone to it, so I picked out the Payne's gray. And I'm just taking that light colored Payne's gray over the top of the white of on the strawberry that way it looks like the water that it came from so and plus that you get the reflections too of the water so and i'm filling in around those little water droplets little water bubbles And like that center that I was doing with the strawberry where you can't really see the water go over the top of it, like the strawberry shining through it. I didn't use any um, <clears throat> OMS on that or odorless mineral spirits is because it's too small of an area. So I made sure to uh, layer it several, several times. And then toward the end, you know, I used a little bit more pressure on my pencil, pushing down in a burnishing kind of mode. Um, so that way I was filling in the tooth of the paper without having to use the OMS because I it was just too small I would have uh, went over a lot of my detail it would have it, it's just too small for me to use the OMS on if you had a um, one of those uh, pencil uh, blenders uh, that you get I use usually use the one with from Karen Dosh um, they got those pencil blenders and those would work also in those little tiny areas, but 
me, I was too lazy to take it out. So <laughs> I just went with the burnishing technique to get the area of the strawberry right there with a more richer like little gap between the water I got I did burnishing on that now whenever I'm using like a lighter color like a white or even the lighter pink or the even the violet that's really really light if I'm really trying to layer that in I do add more pressure to those colors on the paper than I would using some of the other ones that are more toned um, it's just something that I do I <laughs> yeah, I don't know it just ends up I want that to stay and I don't really want a lot of layering on top of that so if there is tooth of the paper that's still there and I do want to go over the top of it it as long as just a little bit of the cover color comes off I don't really need a whole bunch of layers on top of my white because that specific area I want it to stay light so I do add pressure to it All right, doing some readjusting of the camera there. And now I'm kind of going over the top of the area where I want it to be the widest part. So I'll go ahead and push down and add a little bit of pressure to this while I'm doing this. And even though it's really hard to see the white, I mean, it was for me also to see the white where I was putting it in but I still wanted to push down a little hard, kind of do a little bit of a burnishing with my white first. So that way, if I did go over the top of it with a light color, it wouldn't, um, I wouldn't get as much of that reddish pigment or whatever color I'm using because I wanted that to stay white or at least lighter. Now here I am going ahead and putting in my seeds first, still using that terracotta. Some of the seeds I try and put as close as I could to where it was on the reference photo and other seeds I just kind of, um, kind of put in different areas, not exact. Now these are the little water splashes that are in the um, reference photo that you can really see. It's like a grayish tone. It's more gray, I think, in the reference photo. But I went ahead and added some of the purple hue to it and started putting those in first so that way I could see which ones were my bigger water droplets. And I didn't want to cover over them. so. <laughs> I noticed that whenever you're working around some of these seeds too, if you don't have them filled in, it makes them really hard to see whenever you're going around them and they're not filled in. So the easiest thing to do to make sure that you don't lose your seeds in the process of doing the strawberry is to go ahead and fill in your seeds and make your shadowings around there, put in your depth or whatever with your darker color. and. <clears throat> then go and fill around them because that way you know where your seeds are because I have had times where I didn't do that and <laughs> I was like okay which one's my seed and which one is my water droplet because I just I yeah I got kind of confused there <laughs> for a moment and I was like okay maybe I should go ahead and outline all my seeds first and then go back through but it took me a couple times to figure that way out I think I got kind of tired of losing my seeds of where I put them. Here I'm just taking a lighter color and just kind of going back over some areas that looked like they needed some um, touch-ups, like adding more pigment to it. And so I went in there and just started adding some more to it. Because as you go on, you'll notice something when you're working on one area 
and you take your eyes away from it, you'll tend to notice something and you'll be like, oh wait, back here on this part, it just doesn't look right or I can add this to it. So then you just go back and start adding some things to uh, some of the area that you already thought was done. So it's kind of cool, you know, just to how your mind, you know, doesn't see everything when you work on it for so long, but if you take your eyes away from it, then for a little while, then when they go back to it, you'll notice things. I guess it's the same way if you're making a paint or doing a painting. And, you know, I was talking to my mom on this because she was, she working on paintings too. She's always done paintings and very good ones. I like her flowers she's been working on, but she'll be like, okay, I think I'm done, but I don't know if I'm done yet. So she'll just hang it up on her wall. And every time she passes it by, she always notices something like, oh, I should have added another flower here, or maybe that flower just doesn't look right. I need to readjust it. And after taking your eyes away from things for a while, little bit, then going back to, to it, you'll notice a whole bunch more. And then you'll go back in and you'll add some more or readjust it or refine tune it. And there it was with the OMS. Now I did use OMS on that bottom part. If you've seen that, I kind of went over it quickly. So that was the OMS with my brush. And I think it was just me trying to take out and um, smooth out some of that area there. Had a little bit of a pencil strokes on it. So I went through there and tried to smooth it out just a little bit. But yeah, to get that water effect look like the strawberries underneath, I mean, it's just, all you have to do is just add in some of your colors that you normally would paint a strawberry. Just don't make it very dark. Add very light pigment to it, just enough to give it a little bit of a color. Then go over top of it with either a white or you could use even like a, if you're doing something with like a violet maybe, or just really, really light. And that ain't just a regular violet. It's a soft violet like the Pro Color. It's it's super light. It's almost <clears throat> it's almost white, but it's not. It's still got that purple purplish kind of color to it. But either one, I mean, using the white too to go over the top of it, it does turn it a little bit pinkish. But that's fine because whenever water goes over the top of something, it could give it a little bit of a lighter color, or it could give it a darker color. It all just depends on the water. That you, that's there so that's basically how I uh, get the look of water over the top of the strawberry see this section here has um, this is the top of the water it's not the I don't think this is the exact uh, top top of the water because it had a little bit of a white um, like a super white thin line over the top of it so right now I'm just outlining the darker portion of it of where the water is like the top part of it I'm using the white to kind of tone that down And I mean, the one thing too about doing this is that when you're doing this, it may look weird and may not look right, or maybe it's just not coming together. You look at it and you're like, does that really look like water over a strawberry or does it look like something else? Maybe, maybe you just don't see it quite yet, but as long as you just keep on going and then once you get the strawberry in that isn't in the water, you get that difference between what's in water and what's not in water and it's two different looks and it actually makes sense once you get it done but at first whenever you're working on it and it's just the water or the water over the strawberry it just doesn't, it looks it always looks different it looks weird just keep going with that keep on working on it because once you get it all complete it all comes together Now
Now, in order to get that super, super duper, I don't know, super duper, <laughs> but in order to get that really bright, bright strawberry look, and it's um, like I even used it for like the tip of the strawberry whenever I get to that. And in order to do that, I've been using the scarlet down and then using the permanent red the permanent red and these are both in the Karen Dosh luminance oh my gosh the permanent red is like almost orange I mean it almost looks orange whenever you put it down it is just really really bright it's bright red and then you use the scarlet in conjunction with the scarlet so you use the scarlet first if you're wanting to get that really really bright bright red use the scarlet first after you do that, go over the top of the area um, in the areas that you want bright and you just kind of go around the seed or a, a wider range around the seed just to add your highlight to it. But that, um, that permanent red is super bright. And that's what I use to create the really super bright strawberry look. Now, if I was wanting it to be the opposite, like if I wanted it to be super, super dark, I was using the um, Caradonche Luminance, it's the Crimson Alzarian, and then I would use it on top of it after I would layer it all down, then I would go over the top of it with the, um, and I never know if I'm actually saying this right, but it's like Bordux, Bordux, B-O-R-D, E-A-U-X and it's from the Derwent Life Fest set. I've kind of been going over the top of it in areas with that to kind of darken it. Um, and if you wanted to, and you just kind of transition from colors, you know, if you're wanting to go from light to dark, then I would use the scarlet and then over the top of it, I would use the permanent red just to kind of get it really super bright. But then as I transition, I go using my scarlet, the same one, and then I would go to the uh, my what I call like a medium color, which is the um, here comes another hard word. It's like anthro quartardine or whatever carmen. It's a Caradosh Luminous 580. Um, I would use that one. Uh, in conjunction with my scarlet so and that would be I would use that that one that the name that is too hard to say um, <laughs> it, on top of the scarlet just to kind of darken it a little bit and then as I layer as I keep going and I make it darker I do of course the one that I cannot say his name it's 580 on the Karenosh Luminance I'll take that one and then start using the Crimson Alzarian on top of it just to kind of give it a little bit of a shade of darkness and then as a chain reaction I use the Alzarian and the Bordox color from the Derwent Life Fest. I use those two in conjunction to make it the darkest that I, that I want for the strawberry. So I mean there's like several different layers. There's like one, it would be two, three, basically four um, steps in order to go from a super super bright to more of a ripened dark strawberry so I do transition from light to dark while I'm doing this and I know it's a lot to take in all at once I mean yeah there's a lot of colors being used here and there um, but I do know that whenever I start using them I tend to have a habit of holding on to a certain amount of colors that I use quite often and they end up staying in my hand basically I'll hold like five like five pencils in my other hand so as I'm working I still have five pencils in my hand that I just change out of I'll put one in my hand and then take another one out I do have holders for these things but <laughs> for some reason I just don't feel like reaching all the way across my table I'd rather just have it in my hand so it's kind of funny Now here, see, I added some of that darker color to there, so that way I'm darkening it up as I'm going. Or at least it's a darker red. Those little white circles are the little bubbles or the little water droplets that kind of 
flew up in the air. And I'm trying my best to go around each little water droplet that I have on there. Now I'm kind of putting white over the top of those bigger areas that are supposed to be like the water um, splash onto the strawberry. Because this strawberry part here that I'm filling in that is super, super red, that is supposed to be underwater. So, or at least a thinner layer of water is going over the top of it. It's not, you know, you can kind of see through it. So... And yeah, I'm just kind of layering them in as a, though I'm painting it um, like it wasn't in water. So I'm just kind of going around everything. But once I get to the end of this little section here, that's when I go back and start adding in some um, reflections and stuff like that of water that gives it the effect that water is up over the top of this strawberry here. And I kind of moved the camera back here because I kept on hitting the camera with my pencil over like over and over again and it started vibrating or shaking. So I went ahead and scooted it back just a little bit and then that way you kind of get a little bit of a distance view on it too. It ain't much, but that way you can kind of <clears throat> see the whole outline of the strawberry and what I'm working on. And here I'm just doing the layering process again. I'm putting down a first layer which is it's not super dark of a it's more of a medium tone and then I'm going over the top of it again so there's the little bit darker I think that's the darker one that's actually the um, let's see here no there I think I'm using the um, the Karen Dosh 580 is the uh, in the this is a hard one that I cannot pronounce. It's like Anthro Quadrone Carmen. But yeah, I'm using that one and then also using a little bit of the darker shade. This is the Crimson Azarian over the top of it. And so I'm just layering it on. It's going to take several, several layers to go back and forth over the top of this. So it's not just one layer. And I do believe on this bigger area, since I'm layering so much, and it is a, it is a bigger area, that I'll go over it with mineral spirits. Because like I said, if it's super tiny of an area, I'll just burnish. But if it's like a really, like a bigger area that I can work with, and are at least big enough with not too many humongous, or not humongous, but too many like little bitty details in it, then I can use a um, the mineral spirits to blend out. So yeah, I didn't darken it as much as I did in the center little area part. So this area here that I'm working with is a little bit lighter. So I didn't use that uh, Bordux or, or that Bordux is that Derwent Lightfest color. I didn't use that color to darken it anymore because it's more of a lighter color. And there I am with the Mineral Spirits. I'm going over it. 
blended it out, taking away some of those pencil strokes and just smoothing it together. Now that area there, I was kind of going over the seeds and just kind of darkening them up just a little bit because I was using the, um, my goodness, my line. <laughs> I was using the terracotta. That's what I was using. I was using the terracotta. I don't know. Words are hard. They're slipping for me. I must be getting a little tired, but I was using the terracotta and then I would go back over it with the, like the Venetian red and the, um, and I was using the Derwent Pro Color on that, but um, I just went over the top of it just to kind of darken them down a little bit so that way they weren't too bright, like standing out too much. Here I'm just kind of outlining some of the uh, little bubbles that are in the like little water droplets or little bu bubbles. Um, the ones on the top I kind of go around it with the white and then I add in the center like some of the reds that I use with the strawberry. So that way it gives it a look like you're kind of seeing through it and you see some of that red through it where the strawberry would be. And I don't use like a bright red in it. I use like a one of my darker reds, it's not super dark, it's the Crimson Nalzarian. I do use a little bit of that. And if it's in a little bit of a lighter area, then I'll go over it with, you know, like a lighter red. And that's only in the center of it, around it, in the reference photo around it was just the white. Now here I'm kind of adding in some of the um, Payne's Gray 30% to some of those little shiny, glary, like it's supposed to be like um, kind of like reflections that are in there that are kind of more opaque and so I'm using some of that 30% uh, Payne's gray to kind of go over the top of it and that way it kind of matches the water too and then I'll go back over with some of these white to kind of highlight around the edges but yeah I made some marks in there with my white, I kind of went in with the um, my Payne's Gray. And then uh, later, I should be using some of the, um, let's see here, I'm trying to pull out the color to see if I can kind of get a similar color. But it's like a light, I do believe it was either the pink white from the Caradosh Luminance. Or... Let's see here. No, it looks like it was the Derwent that I'm showing in the picture there. So that would probably be either the Salmon or probably the Oyster. I would actually think it would probably be more or less the Oyster to kind of go over the areas of more reflection. And I would kind of add those in on the strawberry, just kind of putting them in here and there um, where the red is to add the reflection to it. And it'll go over it. It will lighten it a little bit. I don't want to make it really super opaque, but I just want the lines of reflection in there. I know it's really hard to kind of come back and look at your colors and pick them out, but I am definitely doing the best I can on that one. <laughs>
Now here is an area where the water kind of washed up on it and it has some of the actual strawberries showing through, but then it's got this white reflective like thick water um, right in that area. And it's kind of like spider webbed, you know? So I'll just go ahead and put in my strawberry. I'm doing that first, like the strawberry color that's actually doesn't have water, you know, covering those little areas. I'll put those in and then I'll start to go around um, the area with some white and then I'll use the, um, uh, thinking, 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 the, just had it, the soft violet from the Derwent Pro Color. And so I'll be going back and forth with that using the same colors like the white and that purple um, for the water look. And then I'll go over the top of it with some of the 30% if needed to give it some um, kind of a tone like the water tone. I use the 30% Payne's Gray. Now here you see me take that red and kind of go over the top of the white and I'm just doing that barely just a little bit just to tone it and I'm actually toning it with a little bit of the red and it would most likely it would be the um, the red that's hard for me to be able to pronounce of course the Caran 580 I'll just give out the number it's a lot easier and so I tone it out and then I go over the top of it with a white so that way it's got a little bit of a tone. And that's one thing, whenever you're working on a color pencil piece, it's, um, you just kind of work with it. You, you lay down a color, you lay it down lightly. You, and if you do lay it down lightly, you've got enough paper or the texture in the paper to be able to um, go over it again with a different color. So you're able to layer upon layer upon layer and mix things in some of those colors together. You know, you're not limited to just one color. You can add down a white you can add a little bit of red on top of it um, then you can go back in and put white on top of it. it makes like a pink I mean you're able to mix and that's just basically what I'm doing is kind of mixing my colors on it and that's how I create my tones And here I'm just going over some areas with the white, like around the edges of those little spiderweb things, just to kind of give it a little bit of a texture in and around it. And there I am taking the Derwent uh, Drawing Chinese White, and that's what I'm doing to add some more reflections in this strawberry. So that way it looks like it's actually covered by water and you're getting a reflection of the water that's glazed over this strawberry. That way you're not looking at it thinking, okay, it's a strawberry with some weird marks on it. So that's all I'm doing is um, creating that watery texture reflection look is just by adding in the white to it, which is the Derwent Chinese, Chinese, oh boy, I can't even say that right. The Derwent Chinese white, Derwent drawing Chinese white. There we go. Got it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I do know one thing, everything that I'm using uh, in this piece, I will be listing it in the um, description below for you guys. That way, if I have a sleepy brain and I can't think or I miss something, it will definitely be there for y'all. Now here's the little tip of the strawberry where you can see um, some of the red of the strawberry through the water. And so I'm laying down, 
I laid down a little bit of the white. I put a brighter red on it, but not really super bright because it is still covered in water, but I do use a lighter red. Then I go back over it with the white, so that way it kind of glazes it out. And then I'll even come back through, and even though it's so tiny, I kind of use my 30% um, Payne's Gray, it's really, really light, there it is, to kind of make streaks across it, so that way you can kind of see that water texture going over the top of that strawberry. So that way you know that little piece right there is underwater. And it will look different compared to the strawberry above it that is not in the water. And here I go. I think I, in this little part right here, I do believe I'm going ahead and adding in some of the strawberry seeds. So I'm just kind of placing them out and drawing them out with that terracotta by the Derwent Pro Color. And so I'm just going through adding in my seeds. I'm doing everything by looking at my reference photos. That way. I've got an idea of how the seeds are placed out throughout that strawberry. Doesn't have to be perfect, but as you have the contour of the strawberry as it goes back around, you'll notice that some of the seeds, you can't really see them. You kind of see the little hole where the seed would go, but you can't see in it because it's rounding that edge. And so I'm kind of looking at the colors on that and where the dark colors go. So I don't necessarily need to put an actual seed there, but if I need to put like, like a little, you or a little kind of like a backward C or a little mark to where it shows that that's where that goes like a little divot where the seed goes but you can't see the seed then I put those around the edge lines if needed if not you know I just wait until I can get to it to be able to um, to do it Starting on the tip of the strawberry, it is super, super bright. So the very tip of the strawberry is almost like, like daylight shining through it. So it is super, super bright. And like I said before, kind of doing my layering on keeping it with brights, um, like the process I go from doing from light to dark, back, dark back to light. Um, I'm using the brightest colors I got. So I'll be using the scarlet and the permanent red on the tip of the strawberry in order to get it this bright but right before that since i learned my lesson i'm making sure i fill in those seeds so that way i know where they're at otherwise i will lose them in the process so i'm kind of jumping ahead and as you can see the seeds kind of changed a little bit of a color whenever i went out of the water so now i'm using um what is that one that one is the Derwent Life Fast Sandstone. Now you can see me going through there with that purple from the Derwent Life Fast, and I'm just kind of um, outlining the little like on the edge of the seeds they have this little black little mark that comes out from them and so i'm just going through and adding those little marks those dark marks that kind of come out from the seeds and they're very very tiny and now there i am using my my bright colors like my scarlet first or actually no that's the step darker than the scarlet so that would be the Anthra Quadratone Carmen 580. And then I know I went back over it and darkened it just some more with the Crimson Azalean. So if you're needing to darken it, even though it's still light, if you need to darken it, it's very easy to darken something. It's just harder to lighten it. So there I am with my bright colors starting on the, on the strawberry.
looking at my strawberry, I noticed that my favorite parts of the strawberry would have to be looking at the water, but then also looking at this part here where it's the tip of the strawberry, where it's super bright, like the light shining through it. That happens to be one of my favorite parts of the strawberry. I don't know why, but I just always want to stare at it. It's just, I don't know. I guess it's very eye pleasing and I do, I do like it. On the next video, we'll be doing the very, very top of the strawberry and finishing off the leaves with um, some water that's actually going over the top of the leaves. And that, like I said before, it'll be kind of the same kind of, kind of process that I did with the leaves as I did or with the strawberry on the blow with the water going over the top of it. It'll be the same kind of process, except that we're dealing with green. So. It'll make it complete once you see the water kind of going up over the green of the leaves. And then we'll also be showing you the um, touch up texture and the titanium white. I'll be mixing that stuff up and kind of showing you what it does in the next video. So definitely a lot of things coming on the next video to show. And like I said, if you guys are new here and you haven't subscribed or clicked the like button, definitely do that now. Definitely smash the like and click the subscribe. I'd love to have you guys on the channel. And if you guys have any comments whatsoever on any questions or if maybe you're interested in something like with a different medium that maybe you want to see me do or try out, just shoot me a uh, comment and I read those all the time. So yeah it's nice to hear from you guys i love hearing your ideas i love hearing your comments and questions or throwing out you know things that helps others this is a great little channel that i love seeing everybody's um comments so it's been great you guys have been awesome One comment from somebody could actually be helping out somebody else with the same question. So, I mean, it definitely helps out others too, because maybe they're wondering too. Maybe that's on their mind and they just didn't ask the question. So, definitely helps. Now see here, I'm actually transitioning from a lighter red or a really super bright, super bright red and I'm starting to use some darker colors to kind of transition from light into a darker area, like a more ripened area or where light is not shining through the strawberry and it's got more, you know, maybe it's the thicker part of the strawberry, whatever it is, it is darker in the reference photo. So I am actually changing it from light to dark by adding in those darker colors and transitioning them. Now along the edges, you can see that it has a light highlight around the edge line of it. In order to get that light highlight like I did, I used the um, white to kind of go over that fine edge there. But then I also took, and I know my son was watching this, he, he kind of helped me on doing some of the editing too. So yeah, he wanted to help. But um, he told me, he said, mom, he goes, isn't that crazy? He goes, why are you using purple? He goes, you're highlighting the edge of the strawberry with a purple. And I was like, yeah, you just, I mean, that's one thing that you do. The reference photo had this purplish kind of pinkish look to it. And I liked it and I wanted to keep it. So I outlined the outside of the strawberry with a white. But then I take a, and this is out of the Caradosh Luminance. It is the Ultramarine it's actually ultramarine pink to be honest it's, it looks like it's a purple like it seriously looks like a purple but it's actually ultramarine pink the number on it is 083 now i did use that 
to come away from that white to outline around some of the seed areas where the edge of the seed where it kind of loops around the other side of the bear are the strawberry I used this color to kind of go around it because in the reference photo it did look like it had that color and by doing that it adds a reflection like a bright highlighted reflection but it also gives depth to those seeds that rounds the other side so you're creating that depth by adding in those colors and making it look more rounded so i went over the top of those um, i went around the seeds first then i went ahead and put in my dark you know on the inside for where the seed was sunken into but then i went and added in my reds and everything that I would normally with my strawberry and then uh, use my ultramarine so around the seeds so it's all just layering it but I don't want to go over the top of it with my red otherwise I may lose that brightness and it might end up darkening it And there you can kind of see the color that I was talking about that I thought I said it was purple, but it was actually the the ultramarine pink. Kind of looks kind of purplish. And so I'm kind of going around and outlining some of the strawberries like around the edges where the highlight would be on the strawberry. Now these darker colors that you're seeing me use, I'm basically just going around the strawberries, adding in that darker tone that's around it. Because it is sunken in, it gives a darker tone. And so now I'm using that Derwent Life Vest Bordox uh, color. I think that's how you say it. And in the center of this strawberry, it's going to be a lot darker in the center. So I'll be using my darker color reds and layering them. So I'll add in my lighter color first and I'll go over it with the darker color. And these here, I will actually blend out with the OMS. Again, because it is a bigger area, I do blend out with the OMS. But after I blend out with the OMS, I will have to go back over it, you know, another time and add more layer to it. So that way it doesn't look washed out, that you have that nice pigment, um, nice rich color coming through. And that will actually be done um, on the second video because I'll actually get through that so I probably won't tape that part where I'm going over it again for a second time um, it'll just be basically using the same colors that I did before I'm just layering it more pigment on top of it so that way it's making it more richer is all I would be doing because I would really like to go ahead and finish off the top of the strawberry and the leaf on the next video along with doing some of the highlights. So I'm going to go ahead and let this all play out. It's not much longer on this one here to go ahead and finish off this first 
are actually the second part to this strawberry video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please leave me a like or a, um, should I say a thumbs up on this and I will see you all on the next video. <laughs> Bye.